Marilia? Marilia? Hmm? I'm sorry to wake you, Marilia, but um... Where... where's the way? His cell is empty. It's time. We've brought him to the treasury. That's where we keep the mirror. I have to be there. Come on, follow me. The treasury was a grotto, filled to the nook with chests, piles of gold, rare crowns, giant gems, and many other costly items. The dry, sandy walls were painted in warm colors by the torches, whose light reflected on the thousands of gold pieces and shiny trinkets. Somewhere in the back, looking hardly remarkable between a pile of coins, necklaces and gems, stood a tall mirror, covered with a red cloth. In front of that mirror stood the wraith, in perfect stillness, like a statue. Flanking him were two rat guards, eyeing the strange being with stern caution as Merilia and the captain entered the room. Merilia. He won't look into the mirror without you here. Of course not. Do you wish to look first, Merilia? I'm not sure. It's your decision. I'm a little bit scared. But isn't this why you set out in the first place? It is. But now that I'm here, I'm not sure if this is the way for me. Listen to what your heart tells you. Then no. No, I don't want to look. I want you to look, Wraith. And together we will go out and keep on seeking. Seeking someone who may have seen Nuswick, or, or to seek out Nuswick himself, I don't know. No, I won't look. Very well, but I fear that I have to. Indeed you do, Wraith. Even though I understand that, in contrast to myself, looking into a mirror is not exactly the most pleasant of activities for you. I'm ready. Very well. Remove the cloth! the borders, entered the gates, the innocent lose themselves. What's happening to me? You will return, Nuswick. A wraith you shall be, a horrid sight to behold. Can I change back? How? You must grow. Wisdom, pure love, pure trust can set you free. I've changed. Horrid to behold. Beware. Your future will be revealed to you. Now. Wraith? Wraith? Wraith, did you find out what you had to? Yes. Yes, I did. And more than that. Could I... have a moment to myself, please? Captain? Hmm. Very well. Close the doors, friends. We will leave you here until you knock, Wraith. O oh, spirit, will of the woods, I remember again. 
all of it. Why does this have to happen? Why this whole journey for Merillia? I don't understand. I am Nuswick, and I am cursed. I was just a silly boy, too curious for his own good, nothing more. Why did this need to change me into a monster, hated and feared by all? Why does this need to be the way for Merillia to find her Nuswick? What purpose has it served? Answer me, great will of life. Why would I listen to that mirror? Why would I go to that place? I don't have to. I'm free. You do not choose my future for me. But... But, Merillia, it's for her that this needs to happen. It needs to happen. We have to go to the Black Rhododendrons. I have to do this for her, even if I don't understand why. If only Saffredon were here. And the wraith kept talking to himself and calling out to the will of the woods, hoping to muster the courage he needed, until at last the captain knocked on the door. You can come in now. Well? Merillia, Captain, I can honestly say to you that I am not a dark snatcher. Of course you're not. I have no evil intentions, and I never did. Mm hmm? But there is something else. Huh? I have to be Merillia's guide on her journey, and I know now where to go. Morelia, let me send some of my men with you. No. I have to be her guide. I alone. <laughs> well, excuse me, Mr. Wraith, but you are not exactly in any position to counter my demands. If your men do follow us, they will all die, Captain. Where we are bound, none can follow. Wraith? Forgive me, Morelia. I wish things were different, but I know something now. Something I can't tell you yet, but I'm only asking you for the trust you have already given me for just a bit longer. And what of my trust, Wraith? Do you really expect me to send her off with you to some dangerous area or maybe some kind of- The Black Rhododendrons, Captain. What? That's insane! No one goes there. That's where the, where, where the... Where the monster whose body is darkness lives. Yes, and absolutely no one, not even an unspeakably handsome captain of the rats, could hope to survive an encounter with that. We have to go there. For reasons I cannot tell you. Dear Wraith, this is all so suspicious, it's laughable. I'm to send you, a ghostly creature of unknown origin... Off with this innocent and enchantingly beautiful girl to the most horrific place known to rat kind? I know my appearance is not to your liking, Captain. You don't need to remind me of that. Nor of Merillia's beauty. I'm aware of that as well. And yes, I expect you to let us go to that terrible place and you will let us go. 
Because none of this is your concern. But Wraith, I'm frightened. So am I, Mirelia, so am I. But this is for you, truly. Mirelia, you, you can't just keep trusting mm. this. It's, it's... it's actually, Captain, yes, I can. If the Black Rodent entrance is where we have to go, well then, that's where we'll go. But I do want to know why. I've seen the future. Are you sure? Oh, yes. What did you see? The Black Rhododendrons. That's where you will see Nuswick again. Really? Are you absolutely sure? What was he doing there? What did he look like when you saw him? Was he all right? I can't tell you, Mirelia. I'm not sure. He wasn't moving, and, and I only saw him for an instant, but I knew it was Nuswick. And I knew where he was. Give me one reason why I would let you go and take her there. Captain, do you see yourself as a true gentleman who treats ladies with honour and respect? Well, of course, absolutely. No problem, no question at all. Then you should let us go. I want to go. Keeping us here would be nothing more than treating me like a prisoner, which wouldn't be very gentlemanly. But it's for your own well-being, Marillion. No, Captain. Let us go. Thank you for everything, but now is the time to go. You've heard her, Captain. Let us go. Harm her. And I swear to you, this will be your end, Wraith. Despite the captain's threatening words, Marilia's perseverance finally did manage to convince him, and he allowed the strange duo to continue their journey. A short while later, Marilia and the Wraith were brought to the shores of Coral Lake. There was tethered a simple wooden raft, punted by an old rat in a long woolen cloak. It was a grey afternoon, and a mysterious fog veiled the trees on the far shore of the lake, where our friends were headed. Grudgingly, the captain said goodbye to Marilia, and watched solemnly as the beautiful elf maiden stood there, guarded by the dark figure of the wraith, slowly floating away from him into the bleak mist, finally disappearing like an old memory. On the other side of the lake, it looked like a different forest altogether. The trees seemed less inviting, like they had secrets to hide from the light of day. They huddled together in contorted shapes, heaving and creaking even when there was very little wind. As foreboding as it looked, this was where the wraith was taking Marilia. Once they had said farewell to the old ferryman, they continued on down the woods. After a while, they reached a place where the woods became less dense. Here, the trees formed a stately corridor of pillars, supporting a high dome of foliage that only allowed very thin, ghostly rays of light to touch the ground. The ground itself became flat and dark. Here and there, black bushes appeared, rhododendrons. The further on they went, the taller the bushes became, and the darker and more ominous the giant trees around them seemed to be. The sounds of ordinary birds were suddenly lost and replaced by the calls of unknown creatures 
that might not even have been birds at all. And then, evening fell, and the darkness truly closed in. This is where the black rhododendrons grow. Those gleaming black bushes look like they don't belong in this world. This whole place feels... wrong. Even the ground seems to consist of some horrible black... something. You smell that? Those are not the smells of trees or animals. It's pungent yet dull. It's like we're in another world. Marilia, if you want, you can wrap my cloak around you. You'll be warm and safe then. Thank you. Do you know what the monster whose body is darkness actually is? I suppose so. Saffredon told me about it once. He told me it could appear wherever darkness ruled. I know now what it is. I've seen it. And it's not just a monster. It's more than that. Sh should we be talking about this now? I think we should, Mirelia. You should know. This monster... It is the force behind the Dark Snatchers, behind the Dorsals, behind all of it. It is a being from another world, and it doesn't just live in the darkness. It doesn't just feed on the darkness. It is the darkness. Not the darkness of night and shadow, but the darkness within. All of our dark feelings, fear, anger, envy, they feed it. And whenever we give in to those feelings, it grows stronger. And when the monster grows strong, it gives life, if that word is even appropriate, to evil wraiths known as the Dark Snatchers. The ones who turn elves into dorsals, for no other reason than to make the world a darker place. Wraith, you're not exactly comforting me right now. I'm no such wraith, Mirilia. I just look like one. I know, but... Pure love. Pure trust. What? That's w what you have given me. Now I understand why I need to be a despicable wraith. I need to be. Pure love. Pure trust. Wraith, what are you talking about? I don't understand. It's close now. We have to move on. It's so quiet here. Night is falling. Looking up, all I see is a dark sky far, far above us. And behind us, it's like there's only blackness. Mirilia, look there. Such an enormous tree. So crooked and twisted and gnarled. Its roots form a hill. Look on the hill. How peculiar. It seems to be some sort of altar, or a bed of stone, rather. There is something special about that place. Trust me. Wraith, you're squeezing my hand. Are you frightened, too? Please don't be. It is time, Mirilia. Though it may not seem so, this is what needed to happen. What needed to happen? What are you talking about? You will see very soon, Mirilia. Remember the altar. 
The altar? What about the altar? You will know when it is time. There it is. There, in the darkness of the woods. Two huge, red glowing eyes. It is only a shadow, Marilia. The most beautiful elf in my woods. You have done well leading her here, Wraith. You have served me well. I never served you! Your world's darkness. This is not your kingdom. The kingdom of darkness is everywhere. Beneath every stone and in the heart of every creature, there is shadow and malice. Let her go! ever seen, but gone too quickly. (gasps) 
Thunder rumbled high above the trees as Merilia remembered the wraith's words and knew what she had to do. Taking his broken body in her arms, she slowly, carefully ascended the hill. There, she led him down, tenderly, on the simple bed of stone. Marilia kneeled and looked up. High, high above, the branches of the trees reached out to each other, like people and creatures reach out to each other in this lonely world. Beyond those branches, the sky was dark. She lowered her head, took the wraith's thin hand in hers, and wept. Her tears rolled down on the altar and onto the wraith's cloak, and she wept and kept on weeping, until at last sleep claimed her. Morning. Oh, my dear Wraith. Wraith? He's gone. Wraith? Marilia. Mm. Mm. Swig? Noiswick, yeah. Just, just another Noiswick now. Noiswick, my dearest Noiswick, my dearest Wraith. Marilia, I, I, I know Noiswick. I know who you are. I know who you were. Just hold me now. No, Marilia. I, I just wanted to say, I love you. Nuswick had returned, but now he was no longer the little boy that he used to be, but a handsome young elven man with wisdom and strength in his eyes. Merilia kissed him, and together they returned through the woods, talking, laughing, and basking in each other's company. Nuswick had changed, but so had Merilia. She did not realize it, but Nuswick saw now very clearly that she was no longer a girl either, but a smart young woman. And in small things, Marilia could still see the wraith that Nuswick had been. Something of that wraith kept living in Nuswick, and the light that he had radiated 
continued on in the whole of the woods. The black rhododendrons had become green and ready to sprout flowers, and golden rays of sunlight illuminated the world around them. And so, Noiswick and Marilia returned through the forest without fear. And along the way, they encountered Redlie again. And even she congratulated Noiswick on his obvious improvement in the looks department and decided to give both elves another ride back to their tree. And when at last they came home, Noiswick and Marilia were hugged tight by Balm and Tanner, who were happier now than they had ever been in their lives. A great feast was held to celebrate the return of the two lost elves, and everyone in the tree was joyful. Time went by, and Nuswick and Marilia kept feeling the will of the woods flowing through their very being. Together, they were now taught by Saphrodon to understand the many secrets and mysteries of the world so they could follow in his footsteps many years later. And together, they would make many more discoveries and unravel many more secrets. But they both knew in their hearts that there was so much that they would never understand of the will of the woods. And that was quite all right with them. But of all that they had been through together, there was one discovery that outshone all others and would forever remain the greatest and most wonderful mystery. The discovery of pure love and pure trust. The Will of the Woods was written by Domine de Groot, directed by Eline Hoskins, sound recording, editing and post-production by Domine de Groot, music composed and performed by Peter van Riet, Voltum's team by Vincent Pichal. The Will of the Woods featured the voices of Domine de Groot as the narrator, the Wraith, Captain Wingai, and the monster. Stefanie Kuyt as Mirelia. Eileen Hoskins as Nuswick, Tana, and the Dozels. Niklaas Reinhold as Saffredon. Aaron Bodanovic as Voltum the Mole Alchemist, the Sudden Rat, and the French Red. Grace van Lijsbetten as Redla. And James Bishop as Bo the Lumberjack.
The Will of the Woods is an audio epics production.